As I give my examples and as I uh, look at some of the, uh, these are the reproductions of artists, I was just, I, it came to me that as you work out from a sky, as you're, oh, you're beginning, um, you start, it, it starts directing you in, in a way that's going to give you uh, maybe the emotional power of a landscape or what you were just talking about, Jenna and, and Emily, you know, or geographic, and you think, wait a minute, this is whatever we said, upstate New York, or this is um, uh, Montana, or St. Lawrence, but back, whatever. Um, these clearly, well, I think they could be many places, but the sky starts dictating. Now, you could say you can finish with the sky. I'm suggesting using the sky, or maybe even only the sky, as right. You could do a painting that was nothing but sky. Yeah, that's a good example. I don't know if this is Stephen Fox. Um, it is Stephen Fox. Reimagining the Hudson, actually. Um, and this, the work becomes practically only the sky. And the sky is the atmosphere, it's the, it's the, uh, mood, it's everything. Um, you get some others like this. This may be, uh, I don't know whether that was Turner, maybe Turner, um, where you get a similar thing happening. The sky, the sea become one. Wow. Um, here, a contemporary painter, Jane Wilson. Um, sometimes I have to check whether it's upside down or right side up. Uh, but here she does bands of sky mutating down into so in a way you don't know when it becomes sea or whether or what or or is it important. But she works with this, you know, in a way it becomes a um, an abstraction of water, sky, light, you name it. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get across. Are we supposed to take a Either, yeah, take to, something to inspire you. Either um, you can take a Winslow Homer over here, or you can take a photograph and <coughs> develop your own um, thing. I put up a few things here. This is a photograph. Actually, this is the lake where I go in the summer. Uh, Turner. Um, Victor Hugo. Hello. Good oh goodness. Wow. <laughs> That's almost my favorite thing, because I just, when I found that somewhere years ago, I thought, wait a minute. And it's ink and paint, and I had no idea he did such a thing. We probably all know this. This is Marin, John Marin. William Plon, um, a Maine artist, wonderful painter, did all sorts of stuff that you guys who are very interested in. Technique with love, he did things with glue, and um, probably salt. Uh, one of the luminists, uh, Fitzhugh Lane. And, and you just realize, I mean, this whole show, I don't know how many of you saw this show at the National Gallery, but 30 years? 30 years, yeah. 30 years, and some of you aren't old enough, probably. You said to <laughs> um, but these, he started as a boat builder and uh, worked in his father's uh, boat building. So that was one of his huge interests. But these companies become all about light, all about sky. And um, even, especially if you don't know him, look at that, to see, look at these to see this. And we were talking about boats and how boats sit on the water. Another thing to concentrate. This was my photograph that I took. I think at the place where I go for that workshop in Massachusetts. Um, rocks, sea, tiny bit as a horizon. So I started by making some changes and decisions, which I think influence what the mood and everything else. I lowered my horizon line. I I I did. I liked the emphasis on the. Um, this kind of verticality. In fact, I might have done more. This one is a, more, a little bit more awesome and distant thing in a way. I, this probably makes it a little more approachable. This one, you get in this painting more humanly. humanly. Here, you're more. It would be wow. interesting to do the same painting with different horizons. Actually, you could. You could do maybe. Because this one is. You, one. This one really kind of almost blocks the photograph. Yes. Blocks you out of the sky. But if you made the sky, if you enlarged the sky, but but not made it as small as that, it would. And then looked at the both side by side. Yeah. Like Actually, that would be um, I, I, absolutely a perfect extension of this concept. You know, playing with that. 
you know, doing two or three just to explore that. And because this is all, how do you get into the painting? How, how, do, you, how do you walk into this painting? You just absolutely you have to look for those planes. Yeah. Even if it's, um, you know, <coughs> you could just imagine if, if I hadn't done anything in here, it would be totally a pile of dough. But it's finding those and, and being fairly specific. You can't, because I always want to um, some edges. So if you keep doing that, I guess that yeah. makes them doughy. You have it's to going to be very few rocks, though there are rocks that are rounded. But I mean, you could look at his. I mentioned here, point out lower horizon, narrower. The sky was wet on wet, and I just proceeded. And I'll be glad to do any kind of. So you actually start, you, you start, so your process is you kind of map out your format, you know, where the horizon is, where the foreground is, where the midground is, and then you pencil it in, maybe, and then you start with the sky and proceed down. I, that's how I did it. Now, I don't think that needs to be a rule, but yeah, the no. one thing about it is you know, the sky and the sea, if you're doing sea, should have a response, you know, of some sort. If it's totally alienated, one from the other. You get a kind of funny, I mean, you can see here, you know, the brightness in both, and the same sort of bright blue. Jaggediest clouds. But, see, that's think, yeah. but look at some of these, it, those photographs over there. There are clouds that are amazingly cut, carved out. There are clouds, um, I mean, this sensation we talked about a little last week is a kind of a wonderful thing to get that um, softening down here. and the. There's a pretty hard edge here, but um, because I didn't paint, I mean, I didn't put water in this mm -hmm. part. Um, I have yeah, lots of Kleenex, another thing to use, so we could, um, anybody who wants to take some of my Kleenex so for that. Um, very puffy, puffy, puffy. This is um, boys watching a steamboat, good little boat on the thing, too. Uh, <coughs> if you're putting a boat in, that's a not, sort of a side issue, but we can talk about it. Um, these these sails are very carved out, very clean, uh, but in a sense, it sort of evaporates also the whole the boat into the into the water. Um, one of my favorites because it's so offbeat, um, and I've shown this before. This is Beatrice mm -hmm. Potter, and I just love it. And it's a ra it's rain. It's some it's church. Beatrice Potter. Beatrix Potter. Oh, you know Peter she, Rabbit. She was and really good. And this is uh, this wonderful. Her viewpoint, uh, she was quite a painter. Uh, I mean, she did what she wanted to do, but her, um, this is all about atmosphere and, and this rainy. Thank you. 